TACMAN is a robust, highly specific, and, might I add, rather flexible real-time PCR chemistry. Users have the option to label their TACMAN probes with different dyes, permitting them to multiplex more than one target in a single well. In a related Ask TACMAN video, I discuss the advantages of multiplexing. In this video, I'll discuss a big danger of this technique, as well as answer a related inquiry from Rushita at the Institute of Cardiovascular Sciences in Canada. Namely, what is the best and most cost-effective way to standardize a multiplex experiment? Let's review some basics. In a single-plex gene expression experiment, I always amplify my target and endogenous control assays in separate wells. But say I want to pipette these into a single well. To do so, I need to label my two assay probes with two different dyes that my instrument can distinguish. Let's go with FAM and VIC. At this point, I simply combine my two probes into a single well, amplify, and get comparable data to my single-plex experiment. Right? Mm, maybe. Here's the concern. When two assays share a well, they compete for the same pool of common reagents, including enzyme and DNTPs. If one gene, typically the normalizer, comes up much earlier in the reaction, it may hit its linear and plateau phases before the second gene even appears in our amp plot. The target gene will thus be starved of common reagents, such as DNTPs, and it will likely experience poor amplification. Fortunately, there's an adjustment we can make that often solves this problem, namely primer limiting the normalizer gene. If we significantly reduce the normalizer assay's primer concentration, it will hit its plateau much earlier, not because it's used up the DNTPs, but rather its own primer. In theory, and often in practice, enough common reagent will remain in the well for the target gene assay to amplify properly. Life Technologies sells an array of VIC-labeled, primer-limited endogenous control assays for duplex gene expression. I suggest starting with one of these. Now that said, you should still run some tests to make certain that combining assays doesn't affect final results. My suggestion? Take several of your samples, maybe five or six untreated plus five or six treated, and amplify them all with both of your assays in singleplex and in duplex. Next, calculate full change data. If sample to sample results agree between your two groups, it's likely that multiplexing isn't having a negative effect on your results. But if they don't agree, you're probably better off not taking the risk. One last technical point. Most real-time instruments are equipped with multiple filter sets, suggesting one can combine numerous assays in a single well. But be very careful here. The more targets one adds to a single reaction, the more complex the interactions among them, and the greater the danger that final data will be skewed. Remember, Always validate any multiplex by comparing its results across several samples and even over a range of starting RNA concentrations, just to be sure your multiplex data are trustworthy. If you'd like to learn more about real-time multiplexing, please go to lifetechnologies.com and search for the application note entitled Factors Influencing Multiplex Real-Time PCR. Do you have a real-time PCR question? Just ask Tagman. Ask us on Twitter using the hashtag AskTacMan, hit us up on Facebook, or go visit lifetechnologies.com forward slash AskTacMan.